see no rational reason to to deny this. Uh, this is the way, the way that the city's going. There is no there is no plausible health problems related to this. That certainly to be measure. Um, He's put out a, a, a tiny signal, probably less than laptop, 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 router, uh, all the TVs uh, being made. The, the regular, the non-cell phones, wireless phones that everybody's been using for years. It's the same frequency. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't believe we'd even entertain uh, putting this off for, for uh, for, for no no good reason whatsoever. Carol? I rather err on the side of um, being cautious. Uh, we don't know what these um, airwaves are doing, these electronic waves, uh, for sure. And I still think that there's the possibility of some um, health, health um, effects from this. And in addition to that, we have all these electronic devices, and you add them all up, and then you add to that a meter outside your house that is also generating this, and you add all that together, and that, that's adding up to quite a bit of impact on our bodies and our brains. And I just think that we should um, step back, let's take a look at it, and do a little more study. And I know you're shaking your head, but I am the one who I really, bottom line for me is let's take a look at the health and the well-being of our citizens. And there's enough of them that have real concern about this. I think we should um, pay attention to them. So I will vote against this motion. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Well, let me just say something. That I called the meeting this morning. Um, because I wanted to have a common base of facts for the citizens who are coming towards to us. And this, we've interacted with this group before on the uh, AT&T cell tower and, and on the uh, recent um, ordinance regulating cell towers. And um, it's been productive to, to at least get the facts, a, a common understanding of what the underlying facts are. <laughs> One of the interesting things that came up that would make me consider this, even though you're probably right, technically, uh, these are low, low energy uh, devices, but it might be possible to have an, a kind of an opt-out arrangement that would be um, viable in the sense that you can get these meters without an, the attachment that enables them to communicate with the with the with the meter reader and then they just become a digital if i understand this correctly they become a digital um, meter that has to be read manually and you might have to charge for the opt-out feature because it would require more cost to the city but for people who are very concerned about it that's that's something so this just came up in the discussion in order to have that conversation with the council, we would have to put this off for a meeting or two. And that's that's the the other argument on this thing. Uh, David, and then, okay, and then uh, Mike, and then Greg, and then Russ. I'll see, before I get to my two points, I'll add to what I've heard so far. Uh, Russ said it's low powered, and not only is it low powered, but it's outside. So it has even less effect than these do. Whether it has problems or not, I don't know. Uh, to your point, whether we have an opt-out and charge policy has nothing to do with buying the equipment. So there's that. And then I, my two points are this. We've got 40% of these installed in the city, and they all use a specific reader and software. If we were to find some alternative to this, it would require getting rid of all those and starting from ground up. And number two, if a simple call to the company would say, number one, whether you can get first generation equipment, and number two, if you can't, is it possible to reprogram them to be in standby mode, which would make a number of people happier. So I don't see any reason to put it off. 
Um, who did I say, Mike and then Greg? Yeah. Yeah, just just looking at it, looking at the power, and, and I don't I don't see that it could be that great of a concern. I would like to see an opt-out policy if we could arrange for one, but I don't think it affects the buy of these at this point. Greg? I, um, I don't see the harm in, in just holding off and, and addressing the questions that, that Dave brought up. Can we do the first generation? And then, or can we uh, reset the ones that we'd like to purchase in a different way so it, it um, um, makes some people feel better? I, it doesn't seem to me that it's so timely that we have to purchase them right now, so I would argue we're better off to wait and get that information and then purchase if, we, uh, if that information is uh, available to us to where we can get the first generation and do it. I, I'm not committing myself in opposition to it, but I think if we can find a compromise to make some of our, our community feel better and still move forward uh, with what we need to in efficiency for the city, I think that's a win-win. So I would rather wait, get that information, and then have it brought back to us. Russ? Oh, I was just going to say that what David said about if one opt out was, still doesn't negate the contract. Uh, Carol? Uh, I don't see why we can't just hold on. So I have to change my battery. I'll be gone for about five to ten minutes, and then we'll be back. And I think the company wants us to do this.